Hi, thanks for hanging out. In this video, I'll review this Triton Thicknesser. Let's get after it. This is a Triton TPT125 Thicknesser. I bought it around about a year ago. Second hand, I paid $300 for it, Australian, or around about $200 US. I wasn't particularly looking for a Triton necessarily, but I had done some research and it certainly came close to the top of the list often as far as value for money goes. So when it came up for sale at that price, I snapped it up. All right, let's have a general look and overview of the machine in general. The only real negative about the machine is the noise. Overall, I really like the design of the machine. Everything's well laid out, everything's easy to get to. None of the screws that you need to get to regularly are obstructed at all. It's quite heavy duty, it's quite heavy to pick up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna remove one of these sides just to make it a little bit easier just to be able to see what's going on inside. One of the features this machine has is this steel tube that runs between the two outside casings of the machine itself. It's not fixed in, so it does roll. So if you're passing timber back over the top, it can rest and roll on that to make it easier to move. With that side guard out of the way, that gives us a much better look. I mentioned the weight. I really like how heavy this is and how well it sits on the surface that you're gonna be using to plane with. I actually end up fastening mine down to my mobile workstation, which gives me a really good platform to, to work off of. The build itself, there's four posts in each corner that help stabilize the cutting head plus the two adjustment screws on each side. So there's plenty of support there for the cutter head. What I like are the onboard tools. There's the two magnets for removing and replacing the blade and the Allen key which removes the bolts for the cover for the cutter head and the cutter head retaining plates themselves as well. Uh, same as I mentioned before, everything's quite easy to get to and all in one place. With this particular thickness, it does vibrate a lot, so these do come loose. I would definitely recommend taking all of these tools out when you're actually using it. But for storage, that's a great place to keep them. Just taking those two screws out of the cutter head cover, and I'm just going to take this off and we'll have a closer look at the cutter head itself. The thing to remember with this machine and all the machines like this is that it's fit for a particular purpose. The small cutter head on here and the small blades means that there's very little momentum when this is spinning and so you can't take large deep plunging cuts like you could on a much much larger machine. So I think that if you consider that and use that within what it's designed to be capable of, you'll be really really happy with the results as I am too. I've got a video showing how I change the blades on here, so I'm not going to show that now. And also how to adjust the cutter head, which I'll talk a little bit more about soon as well. The nice feature I like here is this red catch, which locks as you move the cutter head around. So that it gives you a nice stable working area for being able to remove these screws and the retaining plate and change the blade. In order to be able to move the blade again, you need to push that pin in so that it allows you to be able to rotate the cutter head to the next blade and change it. When you're putting the, the cutter head cover back on, you need to make sure that that pin has been pushed and the cutter head has been slightly rotated. That will make it much easier to be able to put that cover back on and it also means that the machine will be inoperable if you don't put the cover back on to be able to hold that pin in as the cutter head is spinning around. That's a good safety feature. This is the dust chute that comes with the machine. It attaches on the back here with a couple of screws and you can attach a vacuum to this end obviously. I don't use it because my vacuum's not strong enough to be able to suck the, the chips out of here and they get stuck in this neck. So I just run it with this off. It causes a bit of mess, but it's pretty easy to clean up and I, I don't mind because of the results that I get out of it. 
A word on the blades, these blades are quite a universal blade for a lot of these style of thicknesses. So you shop around online, type in the model that you've got, doesn't have to be the Triton of course, it could be any of the others that look similar to this, and you'll find that you'll be able to buy them much cheaper than you will in a store. I can get these for about a third of the price that I can by going into one of the local stores here, and they're cheap enough to buy an extra set or two and have them there ready to go when you need them. Working our way down the machine, getting towards the bottom, the depth gauge on here is all fairly standard. There's nothing particularly special about that. I don't use that for my final measurements. What I do use it for is being able to get close to what I need to take as my initial cut, and then I run the timber through until I'm at the, the thickness that I need. This is adjustable, so you can get this quite accurate if you want to, and it's up to you whether you use it for your finish dimensions or not, uh, but it's a, a nice, quality feature there on this machine as well. One thing you need to deal with with many of these thicknesses is snipe and one way to reduce that is to make sure that your infeed and outfeed tables are perfectly flat and level with the whole thicknesser. On the Triton they've got these adjustment screws and lock nuts that you can undo and adjust to be able to do that which I've done and I've got this perfectly level from side to side. On the bottom of the thickness here is one of my favourite features and that is the solid bar that joins the two screws which raise and lower the cutter head. There's two reasons why I prefer this over the chain and sprocket system that you see on some thicknesses. The first is that it uses bevel gears which helps to eliminate virtually all the backlash between the two sides. And the second is, is the number of teeth that you've got to be able to make adjustments to how flat the cutter head is cutting across both sides of the thicknesser. Each turn of the screw is a sixteenth of an inch or around about one and a half millimetres and there's 16 teeth on these gears. So each time that you move just one tooth to raise or lower that side of the cutter head you're getting a precision of around about four thousandths of an inch or around about 0.1 of a millimetre. So I've made the adjustments which I've shown in the other video and I've got this cutter head cutting perfectly flat. In the video that I showed of adjusting the cutter head, I loosened these two screws and I just pulled this bar away to be able to rotate this gear. What I've since found out is that the gear is spring-loaded. I thought it was just a small amount of movement just to be able to hold it nice and firm against the other gear, but it will actually allow you to be able to squeeze that in and turn the, turn the gear if you needed to to make the adjustment without having to loosen those screws which is a really quick way of being able to adjust the cutter head on this which I really like. The last thing to talk about in relation to eliminating backlash out of the system are these two locking washers with one on each side for each of the height adjustment screws. If you loosen these two screws you can adjust this washer and that will eliminate backlash between the cutter head itself and the height adjustment screw. Just tighten that until you get it to a point that the screw still turns freely without binding up at all and then tighten down these two screws. That's the rundown on the machine itself and the features that help make this a great little thicknesser. If you're looking for any of the benchtop type thicknesses like this one, some of those features might help you make a great choice and help you get great results from your thicknesser too. A few recommendations I would make to help you get the most out of this or any of these benchtop thicknesses. First is the tables, the infeed and outfeed tables themselves. These particular types of thicknesses specifically aren't designed for it, but I use a little bit of machinist's wax on these just to be able to keep them nice and slick. Being a painted surface that you're putting it on, it, it doesn't last too long, so I just keep an eye on the timber as it's going through, and if it looks like that it's starting to bind up, I just stop, rub a little bit more on, and then I'm good to go. My number one recommendation for getting the best out of this thickness or, or any of these bench top style thicknesses is to listen to the sound of the timber as it's going through. The sound that I like to run when I'm running timber through here really doesn't change the tone of the sound of the motor just running on its own. That way I know that I've got a nice clean sharp cut that's not bogging the machine down, not putting too much stress on the machine. I think if you're putting the timber through, it doesn't matter whether it's a hardwood or a softwood and the machine really sounds like that it's struggling to be able to cut it, it might cut it, but it's putting stress on the machine and it's probably dulling your blades quicker than what they need to be. 
If you just back off a little bit, you'll probably find that you'll get a nicer finish and also the blades will last a little bit longer. The timber that I've been putting through this machine is an Australian hardwood called Jarra or Eucalyptus Marginata. It's marginally harder than hickory or pecan or, or a timber like that and this machine handles it with no problem whatsoever but I do put it through with only about a quarter of a turn of the handle at a time at the most particularly with wide boards for boards on edge I can certainly take around about half a, a handle cut at a time it's a sixteenth of an inch for a full revolution or about one and a half millimeters so a half turn I'm taking a thirty second of an inch or around about 0 0.7, 0 0.8 of a millimeter or something like that which is more than enough for me, I'm under no time pressure so I can just take my time and get those good results just by listening to the machine and letting the machine do the work. Another recommendation would be to sneak up on your depth of cut if you haven't used that timber before or you're not sure what the machine can handle. Using that listening technique that I just spoke about, what you can do is start to feed the timber through and then increase the cut as you go until you're happy that the machine's handling it and you're getting a nice finish. If you're using a softwood, quite a narrow board, then the chances are that this machine will easily take its maximum depth of cut, which is around about three millimeters or around about an eighth of an inch, which is two turns of the handle. If you're using a hardwood like I have, and it's quite a large board, well then you're probably gonna be doing much, much less than that. Just because the machine says that it can do that depth of cut, you've really got to work with the machine and, and what it's capable of. My final recommendation is about removing the last of the snipe that you get on boards. I've got this machine pretty well dialed in, the snipes as small as I can possibly make it without any other modifications at all. The way that I reduce it is to feed my boards in by butting them against each other as they're going through the machine. It still doesn't eliminate it 100% and a lot of these machines you won't ever get that, but it certainly does a great job. There are other ways to reduce snipe as well. There are videos that show how to make a board that would go into your thicknesser that makes it perfectly flat right the way through. My personal preference is to use the butting technique. It's just easier for me in the setup that I've got. And so that's what I do. There you have it. Like any piece of equipment or tool in your shop, use it for what it's been designed for and what it's capable of and you'll have fantastic results. The Triton TPT125 thicknesser is no exception to that. As a DIYer or occasional user, I've got time on my side, so even though I'm using really hard timber, I can still get fantastic results from this little thicknesser. It really is great value for money, I love it. I love the features that mean that you can really get this dialed in and get great results, and I would highly recommend it. I think if you're looking for a similar style of thicknesser and you can find one with similar features that I've pointed out on here that I think make this great value for money, well then you'll get yourself a great result too. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video has helped you with your decision on buying a new thicknesser. Any questions or comments, please feel free to leave those below. And until next time, remember life's short, so get after it.